Sembanani Dumilan, good evening and welcome to episode 345 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamandongwa Kumalo. It's a Tuesday edition of the Private Property Podcast. And of course, if you're joining us for the first time, you are tuned in to the only daily property show in South Africa that helps you and all your property needs. And it doesn't matter where you are on your property journey, whether you're looking to buy, to sell, to build, or you're renting, this is your one-stop shop on all things relating to property. And to all our regular viewers at home, from the top fan gang members on Facebook and Instagram, as well as uh, on YouTube, welcome back. You know how we do it every single weekday. You and I have an appointment at 7 p.m. where I'm always in conversation with the property expert who helps us make better property decisions. And talking about making better property decisions, as you know, we also have a host of other great shows every weekdays at 8 p.m. that you can tune into. As it is a Tuesday, you can catch award-winning farmer Umbali Nuoko on the Farming Podcast, and she comes to your screens on Thursdays as well at the same time. And every Mondays and Fridays, chat brings us the Home Shoppers Show, where he takes us through exquisite properties that you can find on www.privateproperty.co.za. And Esty Clarsen brings us the First Time Home Buyers Show every single Wednesday. But she's always in conversation with people who've not only walked that first time home buying journey, but have gone on to grow their property portfolios from strength to strength. Those are some of the great shows that you can look forward to every single weekday at 8 p.m. right here on Private Property's social media pages. I can already see some of the love that we're getting on our Facebook page. Do keep it coming. Uh, Michelle Vormerans is watching. I, saw, um, I also saw Anelda Everton, who's also watching. Uh, of course, Michelle Vormerans, Howard Mokatsani, Glad Shirinda, Messi, Nipipindi, um, Martha Shingani saying we've made the right choice tuning into the Private Property Podcast. And you certainly have done that. And of course, one of the other things that you can look forward to on our Facebook page is entering the competition that we are running, where you can stand a chance of walking away with 500 500 rands cash every single evening uh, right here on the private property podcast. And all you have to do to send a chance of walking away with that cash is to is to uh, comment, rather, on the post that we have pinned on our Facebook page as we set out the bold goal of reaching 20,000 comments. And, of course, if we call your name, you have to be watching us live in order to claim your prize. This evening, we've got 1,500 rands in the money bag. So halfway through the show, we'll see who is going to walk away with that cash prize. Well, that's some of what you can look forward to this evening. And I do hope that if you enter, that you're going to be watching and, of course, uh, be able to walk away with that cash prize. But this evening, we're looking at, you know, one of those topics that I absolutely, absolutely love. We're looking at 10 questions to ask your real estate agent. I think many of us sometimes don't know what we should be asking, especially when it comes to our home ownership journey. We know we should be asking something, right? But we're not quite clear what are some of the questions we need to come on with um, when we are working with an estate agent. And that's part of what we're going to be looking at. I want to find out from you at home, what have been some really great questions that you've been able to ask uh, estate agents that you've worked with in the past that you found very useful and that helped you make a better choice when it comes to the property or properties that you were looking uh, with that estate agent. Do share with us those questions down here below and to help us get a better sense of what we should be asking our estate agents. I'm joined this evening by Annette Evans, who is a general manager at the Institute of of Estate Agents of South Africa, AESA. Uh, Anel, Annette, good evening and thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you, Zama. Thank you very much for inviting me this evening. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a privilege. Thank you. I think, Annette, you know, before we even kickstart the, the questions we should be asking our estate agent, first just take us through what AESA is and the work that it does. Yes, we have actually um, started in 1937. I haven't been here for all of those years, obviously. <laughs> and the main, our main role is to assist and support and guide 
estate agents, property practitioners, as we're going to be calling them very soon. And we are a non-profit organization and we are membership driven. So our members come to us for any assistance and, as I said, support or guidance that they may need. And we are very much involved in upskilling them and also just representing them on the different platforms with stakeholders, such as the Estate Affairs Board, which is the regulator. And they are essentially fall under the Department of Human Settlement. So we are very much the hub. We, we work with everybody and we are as neutral as we can possibly be because the main thing is for us to be, to be there and to have the connections with everybody that we need. We don't generally advise the public, but if somebody phones me and asks a question, I can guide them and, and direct them to the organization that would assist them best. Mm-hmm. And I think that's actually just such a, a, a great resource to be able to tap into because sometimes uh, I think we don't quite know which direction to go uh, when it comes to having some of our questions answered or queries addressed. And I think being able to at the very least get a sense of this is a direction you should be going or these are the right people that you ought to be having a conversation with, um, certainly something that is very useful. Um, and I think then, you know, uh, Annette, we should probably get into to the the first question we should be asking the estate agent uh, that we're working with because I think so many of us at home as I was saying we we tend to not know what to ask I think we know we're supposed to ask something but more often than not we're not exactly clear on okay what what exactly is this thing uh, that I should be asking I think the the number one um, thing, as you mentioned, is that the estate agent you're dealing with needs to have a Fidelity Fund certificate. And that means that they should check that they are registered on the Estate Agency Affairs Board website and make sure that they are registered. And also we encourage them to check that they belong to the Institute of Estate Agents because that extra level of professionalism, um, it just means that you're dealing with somebody who is... um, quite serious, quite committed, and it just means that they're on our website and that means that they are, they're also searchable. So we encourage everybody to check our website, which is iesa.org.za, and also the Estate Agency Affairs Board, that the, the actual agent has a Fidelity Fund certificate. And that is critical because they pay that fund, that fund covers a client for fraud. If there's any fraud, then that Fidelity Fund covers that client to claim for a fraud case, for that example. Mm. And and I I was actually about to ask you a follow-up that you've answered quite well around the importance of that uh, fidelity finally you know you might be dealing with uh, a particular estate agent who's part of an agency and they unfortunately commit fraud uh, we know that sometimes unfortunately there are, there are a few rotten apples uh, doesn't mean that the whole agency is necessarily like that and so you want to make sure that you're working with somebody where in the event where you unfortunately deal with one of the rotten apples, you're going to be able to essentially have cover uh, because mm-hmm. you know that you're working with you know people who are effectively credible. And and then you know and then what would then be the second thing? So we we've, we've now covered our bases. We know that they're you know they're registered state agent that they've got a fidelity uh, fund certificate. What do we then um, have to still ask our estate agent? So I think the, the next thing, if you're a seller, um, would be if you were selling your house, you would you'd want to ask and discuss what your house is worth. So if let's that maybe that's not it's too um, pre preemptive at the moment, but essentially they would give you a market analysis, a comparative market analysis, and compare the sales in the area, and they would give you a good breakdown of what they do and. And that's pretty much my next question. What is this going to cost me? What fees? Firstly, the fees. um, And then also what mandate section? Mm -hmm. Break it down to what what is happening? What are the trends? What what can you expect? And and make sure you're, it's full disclosure, you know, that you have everything, you're fully aware of what it's going to cost you Mm -hmm. up front. And I think, you know, and and I think, um, Annette, when we're dealing with an estate agent, 
um, because I've, I've dealt with, you know, numerous new uh, or isn't able to give you a really good estimate when it comes to, we'll say, the value of your of your property. Uh, you know, what can we do? Because I think sometimes, especially as when we're dealing with the state agents, uh, from uh, often a lot of sellers, it's your first time selling. Not many people uh, deal with the sell side. Uh, when it comes to you know property, we we sometimes get accustomed to the buying side, but certainly slightly less on the sell side. And when you're, we'll say, interviewing that estate agent, you're not mm-hmm. getting a good sense of okay, this is you know the value, and these are the different data sets that they use to get to it. How can mm-hmm. we almost best vet that they a giving us credible information, and in the event where they're not particularly coming up with great um, insight what can what's our alternative well I think um, that's a good question because uh, there's a couple of angles to that firstly the estate agents are not giving you a valuation on your property so that's actually quite a critical point I was having that conversation earlier where evaluate a value of values a property but an estate agent will as you said have that information to hand and I think it's a good question. The, the question I would be asking is, so tell me about the recent sales that you've made in my area. Um, because that is that pertains, one, to the value, and secondly, to the actual fact that they're experienced in your area, what, where their local area expertise stands. So that's mm-hmm. quite important. And you may want to get a couple of agents in and ask them all that, opinion, you know, that and feel where you um, where you can sort of, um, where you, who I should say, you're more comfortable dealing with. Mm. And, you know, well. and it is actually, it's actually uh, gone so nicely to one of the questions our viewers are asking. We are, of course, taking your questions and comments this evening as we look at 10 questions to ask your real estate agent. And I want to find out from you at home, what kind of questions have you previously asked estate agents that you have dealt with that you found very helpful and useful uh, in your own home ownership journey? We have Umo Getzi Matsoso on Instagram saying, can I ask about the value increase in the neighborhood of my prospective property. Uh, And this could also, of course, even be for now the buyer, right? Because you're potentially looking at buying this property. Is that a question that they can ask their estate agent around the the general trend um, in terms of value in that particular neighborhood? Mm. That's That's a really good question because when an estate agent does what we call a comparative market analysis, there's three angles to it. The first angle is what has sold and transferred in the deeds office, which would have been quite some time ago, and what is actually the, is on the market. Because that if there's 300 properties in your street, then clearly your property is, is going to be one of many. And the other one is what is actually um, recently sold. So and, and the trend therein lies therein. So they would actually be able to speak to the agent and look at that. They would a good agent would want to sit with you and go through those things. If they want to throw um, one sheet of paper at you <laughs> through the letterbox and they don't really want to have the conversation, then it means to me that they're not passionate about property. And in my world, people are, pop- are actually passionate about property. So they're more than happy to speak to you about it. And if you ha- are selling a three-bedroom house and you want to be looking at three-bedroom house comparables or you discuss the comparables, you know, um, there are always anomalies, but mm. in general, if you're selling a, a three-bedroom house or a two-bedroom flat, you want to look at comparables and why do they differ? Because we've always had this joke that sometimes across the road it's got a different value, different neighborhood, different area, different um, perceived value. So you need to go through all of those and speak to someone who, who you feel understands it. Mm-mm-mm. And that's such an important one. I am this evening in conversation with Annette Evans, who is a general manager at the Institute of Estate Agents of South Africa. We're looking at 10 questions to ask your, your real estate agent. Uh, I want us to go for a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to go through more of those questions. Uh, we're going to see who the lucky winner of that 1,500 rands that is in the money bag is this evening. I hope they're watching and will, of course, be able to claim their prize. Let's see who the winner is. (laughs) 
And this evening's winner is Umkize Makati. Uh, that is Umkize Makati is the lucky winner that is potentially going to be walking away with that 1,500 rands. I hope that they are watching us live and, of course, will be able to claim their prize. So, Mkiza Makati, if you are watching, do make sure that you drop us a message down here below and, of course, claim that 1,500 rands that is in the money bag. And this evening, I am talking to Annette Evans. We're looking at questions to ask your estate agent. And, of course, I'm asking you at home what have been some of the questions that you've asked your estate agent that have really helped you make better property decisions. And this could be whether you're looking to buy a property or when you are looking to sell. And some of the questions and that uh, the views at home that you're sharing with us, we've got Hod Megazani saying, you know, one of the questions that is asked is what's the average price per square meter in the area and the estate? And that's a really great question. And, And I find that that's also a particularly great question or coming from uh, investors, so property investors always want to, you know, you want to get the lowest amount per square meter as possible. So really getting a good sense of the property that you have versus other properties and the, you know, the cost per square meter is so important. Um, Another one here coming through from, uh, coming through from, Lindy Sichabela saying that is the reason why potential sellers need to look out for professional estate agents who are registered with the uh, uh, with the EEA with the EAAB and that's a I mean and that's to what Annette was saying earlier that you really want to be working with people who are adequately accredited um, because you don't want to find yourself you know having any issues along the way so that is one of those important ones we've got Ubongisiwe Duma saying here my aunt's agent was supposed to sell my aunt's house only to find he was renting it out wish i knew all these questions a year ago i mean i'd even be interested to find out how that that even happened right i mean how how that even happens i mean to the i have so many questions just based (laughs) on that comment because this is not this is not that thing that can easily happen um, and I guess one of the ways it could potentially happen is your aunt is in a different part of you know town, so they're not necessarily living there, and you've given this estate agent a mandate, and they then list it up for rental, and they are pocketing the money while you know the the property is not selling, unfortunately. And so, if sometimes let's say it takes even up to eight months for that property to get a seller uh, who then like signs on for that whole eight months, they've been renting it out and pocketing that money and I, I guess it would be very difficult for your aunt to have known if she's you know out of town and doesn't live you know in that particular town because of course they wouldn't have access to the place but i would have so many questions i mean utility you know how are utilities being paid unless everything is just prepaid um but you know and it, like, to go back to the, the questions what are some of the other questions that uh, we need to be asking our estate agents yeah i think that um the, the biggest thing is to also ensure that you can get the best price for your property. Sit with the estate agent and say, okay, this is, you know, it's a Tuesday evening, you're welcome to my home, you've come around, walk around the house, and I'll sit and discuss, is there any way I can improve the value of my home? Because I know, for example, we all kind of know that you get in in different countries all over the world, they do what's called home staging. Um, But they do it for a reason because they almost take away all your personal stuff, all your clutter. They neutralize it. They put in, you know, up to date furniture and and they say, okay, here's the property. So maybe they get people to vacate their property before they're actually putting it on the market. But in reality, if it's just you and me and we're going to live in there until we've actually sold the property, then the best thing to do is neutralize your property, make come in from the street and see how, how neutral you can make it and how appealing you can make it. Um, they call it the curb appeal. And the other thing is then if you, if you plan to spend any money, um, then you look at, at kitchens and bathrooms, for example. Um, and there's a lot you can do. You know, for example, if every room in the house is a different color, what often somebody will say, well, just paint it all white and, and think about it like you're going to walk in here and you want a blank canvas for somebody. And that may cost you a few thousand rand, but it may get you a few ten thousands of rand. And a good estate agent would be able to advise you of that. 
Mm. We've got a great question here coming from uh, Usboni Somtembo uh, on Facebook asking, how can the agent assist if I bought a house and later the siblings are fighting and harassing me as a buyer in the property? I know we get this quite a lot uh, sometimes in, in properties in the township where you've bought the property and you bought it from the rightful owner. So suppose the owner was, you know, the parent or even the, you know, the grandparent. So you've rightfully bought it from the rightful owner and yet still getting harassed by, you know, siblings who perhaps still want claim to the property for some reason. Is there anything an estate agent would be able to help with in that regard? Or, you know, should they be looking at other avenues to, you know, best resolve this for, for them? I think that um, it would be difficult for necessarily for an estate agent to step in and help. But what they could do is obtain all the legal documentation that was drawn up and maybe um, advise on arbitration. So what I would what I would suggest where the agent could possibly help is get hold of the transferring attorney, call a meeting um, with a local community, somebody who could arbitrate, um, and and then. You know, if it's in a community scheme, um, then the CSOS is there and they're very helpful. And the community, uh, just repeat to it, it is, it's a community scheme on bid service. So for any of your listeners, if they're living in a scheme and there's any issues whatsoever, there is part of the levy goes towards the community the CSOS, we call it, and any dispute can be taken to them. So that's one mm-hmm. way. And then the arbitration and um, get all the documentation together to show that they haven't and you know they have lawfully transferred that property, and then address any issues and see where they can perhaps address them. Mm-hmm. I hope that is going to you know help. So I know how stressful that can be, uh, especially because you've now bought, you're paying uh, you know a bond, mm-hmm. or if you've bought cash, and you want to be able to enjoy the property that you're staying in. So definitely do look into you know the best ways that you can resolve that uh, for yourself. And and then Annette, what would be then the next set of questions that we need to explore asking our estate agent? Yes, I think the, the, the issue of the mandate is, is a big issue. Um, when I say issue, I don't mean a negative issue. It's a, it's a, it's a big uh, fact. So you have what's called a sole mandate, and there is where one agency is responsible for marketing and selling that property. Everything essentially, and how to explain it in a summary, is that everything has to then go through that one agent for that particular amount of time. You get a dual mandate where two agencies would perhaps get involved, and then you get what's called an open mandate. So I think it's really important that people understand what they're signing. If, they, if they're not sure, it's a good time to ask. Don't sign first and ask later. Um, mm-hmm. That's always, I get a lot of queries from people and they say, but I've signed this, now I need to understand what does it mean. Or it, it's, then I say, it's too late. You've, you've, you've signed it and you need to understand. And when there's properties are being marketed, then it has to be followed through on that particular. So that's important that they ask, please explain the, ma- the mandate to me and um, negotiate the, the fees and the, basically those points at that time. Mm. And that's such an important, I think, principle to adopt. Uh, the don't, don't sign and ask later. First ask, uh, and it, I think it goes beyond just the mandate. I think anything, anything that requires you to sign, whether it's property related, uh, you know, you're looking to buy, you're looking to sell, you're looking to rent, or you're a tenant. Do not sign, then ask later. First, rather ask, be very clear about everything from the get-go. Then only uh, do you sign because you, you don't want to get yourself in a situation where you're signing things that you absolutely uh, do not understand. And then, Annette, what would be the next question we absolutely have to ask our state agents um, when it comes to our home ownership journey? Uh, how long do you think it's going to take to sell the property? Yes. Realistically realistically so you can make plans and then you can understand and the big thing is uh, we call it price counseling so um we always joke and you say you could sell your house for a million more but it's going to take time to get to that price so <laughs> well not so, in this market right i think not not so much in this market i think the the the, the perks from the buyer side about this market is that they're spoiled for choice and they're able to drive down costs to a certain degree so 
I think this is an interesting market that we're finding ourselves Absolutely. in. Yeah. A, and I think it's great for, for buyers who are serious about buying. And it's also great for sellers who are realistic about what their property will sell for, because mm-hmm. we have serious buyers who are willing to, you know, sign on the dotted line and buy that property. Absolutely. And that is, on that exact point you just made, another very important question is when you've signed, you've signed. Um, if people make the mistake of saying, well, on Monday, I, I bought one property on Wednesday, I bought another property and they both off, offers got accepted. You, you've entered into a binding contract. So don't do it lightly um, because you can't just make offers and then hope that one of them gets accepted. You, you've got to make sure that you know that they could both be accepted. So that's really, really important. Mm. We've got a question coming through here on our Facebook page, uh, coming from Ulindisi Chabela, asking uh, if you could just do a quick explainer what the exclusive sole mandate is. When we're talking about, uh, you know, mandates, whether it's an open mandate, uh, sole mandate. So if you can just explain uh, an exclusive sole mandate, what do we mean by that? Yes. Um, Obviously, everybody's got slightly different wording, so they would need to they would need to make sure that they fully understand. But if sold and exclusive, it means that only that particular agency would be able to market the property. So, in other words, and this is why it's quite important, is, is if you when you sign that, it has a time frame. So it must be realistic. Uh, you can't give five years sole mandate and then not do anything on the property. The whole point of having a sole mandate is that they are going to be actively selling um, and do their absolute best to sell your property. So you give them a, a couple of months or so, and then thereafter you must be in a position or you or you are able to then um, open it up or bring another agent in. So it means if they've got sole mandate that if, if they um, have – property on their books any other agency has to bring that person through their books okay mm-hmm. so it, it means that and and sometimes it, it's a wonderful tool because they they will spend they will go all out to put your property on the market and splash it everywhere and it, it can be sold quite quickly because they are spending the money and the time and the effort and energy into getting that property ex- as much exposure as possible rather than it being diluted between a few agencies. So you've got to think what, you know, talk to the agents and see what they recommend. Talk to a couple and see what they recommend. Mm. We've got a, a comment here coming through from Utsepa Mokobudi on Facebook saying, one advice I have, though, for estate agents and sellers is please take professional pictures and tidy your house. A, dis- a disordered house on the website is already a turn off to buyers. And that is yeah. such a big, big, big one because sometimes sometimes the pictures are mm. professional and they look amazing, but the house is just so untidy. You know, the bed is unmade and and you'd even think, did you not know that this is the day where your estate agent is coming in to take pictures? So at the very least, tidy up the place. I always make sure that, you know, you know, my helper comes through and cleans the place. Uh, if, for example, it's still furnished in the event where it's vacant, everything must be clean. Uh, and, and of course, tidy so that all the pictures give you a really great representation of what it looks like. Because that clutter uh, does distract the, you know, the person who's viewing a property on privateproperty.co.za. Yeah. So you do want to make sure that you get that as right as possible. Yeah, and neutralize it as well. And, you know, walk through your property a few times and, and just see what, what catches your eye. Mm-hmm. And, and, it, and it, I think as we close off, I think the last sort of two questions that you have for us that we should be asking our estate agent. I, I think it's uh, about affordability. Um, checking checking what the process of finances are. Um, if you're renting, it's the same thing. You, you need to be able to afford what you're getting and ask them up front what costs are, are going to be incurred. That's really important. Um, and then also, for example, the conditions. Once the conditions have been fulfilled, you need to understand how long is the process of transfer so that you understand when you need the finances and ask them to explain every little um, cost to you. 
Mm-hmm. And that's actually just such an important one because I think that the transfer process, I, I recently for one of the properties dealt with this one and you, and I think I was quite fortunate because the estate agent and even the attorneys were on the ball in explaining what the delays were and, you know, how long I think one of the, the buyers that was interested in, in one of my properties, they had a FLISP subsidy. And so they were explaining that typically when, you know, it's a FLISP buyer, these are the additional, I think it was an additional two weeks or three weeks that it would add on to the, you know, the general cycle. And so we can budget up until this amount. And at every step, I was quite clear of, okay, this is, this is the delay. This is how long it's going to be. And, you know, by the time the, the matter came up for prep and it registered, I, I was not shocked. So I think it's so important to just expectation manage, um, you know, people at home because we, we don't do this on a day-to-day basis. So we also want to make sure that we are kept abreast and, and don't end up getting too anxious because it's not like buying a car where it's, it's quick and easy, you know, in a day, <laughs> you can already have that car yeah, that's uh, have true. the change of ownership. So it's a completely different uh, ball game. And yet, before I let you go, any final tip for our viewers at home when it comes to you know, dealing or working with an estate agent? I think that, um, yeah, understanding when your rights and responsibilities, um, asking them to explain your rights and responsibilities. So, for example, if you have a bond, you need to cancel it. You need to give three months bond cancellation. So a good letting them refer you to a good convincing attorney. They obviously have, could recommend a few and then the seller themselves makes that decision, but the buyer themselves will then be liable for most of the costs. So it'll be nice to get a referral on both sides. The seller always chooses the con- should always choose the convincing attorney and they need to cancel the bond and the buyer will be dealing with that conveyancing attorney and they need to understand the costs up front. So they, they all will be liaising with the transferring attorney. That's, yeah. that's quite critical, I feel. Yeah. Well, Annette, we're going to leave it there this evening. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you. And thank you for hosting it. It's been an awesome evening. Thank you, Zama. And that is Annette Evans, who is the general manager at the Institute of Estate Agents of South Africa, bringing an end to this evening's edition of the Private Property Podcast with myself, Uzamanto Mwakumalo. Looks like we have another rollover. Unfortunately, Mkiza Makati did not claim that 1,500 rands. So tomorrow we're going to have 2,000 rands in the money bag. I hope whoever his name gets pulled out of the hat is watching us live and will be claiming that prize. Well, that's it from myself and the rest of the team. Of course, catch Umbali Nwoko with the Farming Podcast at 8 p.m. I'll be back on your screens tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Until then, hoping you're staying home and staying safe.